We are not professing to tell you the complete story of these activities. Yeah. We are professing to tell you the complete story that we know. Right. But these records that we've uncovered yeah. don't tell the story. They tell pieces of it. This is a story that has been told in bits and pieces. This is an attempt to pull most of it together. We know we don't have the full story. We do, however, have some striking new revelations and insights. The story begins here, just off the nation's front yard, the mall. George White worked with the Truth Drug Committee here at St. Elizabeth's Hospital in the nation's capital. They experimented with mescaline, scopolamine, and marijuana on unwitting victims. The committee soon learned there was no easy panacea, no truth drug at this stage. But White and later colleagues would not stop trying. The goal remained the same. As this 1952 CIA memo says, the aim is controlling an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will and even against such fundamental laws of nature as self-preservation. But it was a discovery here in Basel, Switzerland at Sandoz Laboratories by Dr. Albert Hoffman that led the intelligence agencies of America to believe that they had found the panacea. The discovery was lysergic acid diethylamide, LSD. What in the world were they looking for with the magic mushrooms? I think the best answer to that is that they were looking for fundamental information on compounds that were would be capable of causing changes in in behavior, changes in mental attitude. Did you ever consider what would have happened if any of these substances were given to, say, unwitting people? Oh, I don't remember having considered that specifically. I... What if you... I, I trust perhaps you've thought about it. Uh... Well, I haven't worried about it. Uh, I, you, uh, your question again: What would I have thought had I known that uh, the any of these substances were would have been given to unwitting persons? Uh, you mean a a hostile agent in an, uh, of another government? No, I, I mean that was probably I one mean of the testing, things they had in I mind. I mean testing it out on an American citizen. I. Frank Olson's suicide slowed down the CIA's testing of LSD and other drugs, but only momentarily. The CIA was not the only government agency interested in the possibilities LSD and other drugs presented for mind control. The Army Chemical Corps first started working with the CIA and then branched off on its own. It too tested drugs on unwitting victims. By far, the most chilling experiments we have uncovered took place at this Gothic estate called Raven's Crag, halfway up Mount Royal in Montreal. It houses the Allen Memorial Institute of Psychiatry of McGill University. It was here that the CIA funded a series of experiments, severe experiments. The work was done by the Institute's then director, Dr. Ewan Cameron. It is the closest experimentation to brainwashing yet disclosed. His work, unprecedented in psychiatry, consisted of three areas which he called sleep therapy, psychic driving, and the ultimate depatterning. Dr. Maurice Dangier, current head of the Allen Memorial Institute. In his uh, psychic driving, uh, so-called uh, type of, of therapy, he would give the patient intensive uh, electric treatment in order to make the patient uh, regress deeply, uh, become forgetful, and then he would uh, attempt to implant new ideas uh, in uh, the mind of the patient. The next step was what he called psychic driving. This involved almost endless tape-recorded messages and more drugs for the patient. Cameron wrote that this was the way to make direct control changes in personality. The most severe technique Cameron used was depatterning. He described it as breaking up the existing patterns of behavior by means of intensive electroshock therapy with prolonged periods of sleep. 
He carried out these experiments in something he called the sleep rooms. People in there were like babies. They cried and they were very disoriented. And we were very afraid of the sleep room. We used to walk very carefully against the side of the corridor that was opposite the sleep room with our backs to the wall when we'd go by. Cameron used this combined sleep electroshock treatment on patients as long as 30 days. One patient he kept asleep for 65 days. Now, I don't know if this Jared Lee Loeffner, I don't know if this guy's under mind control or not, but we know that Sirhan Sirhan was, that's even the London Independent and London Guardian, here's the headlines right here, was Robert Kennedy killed by a real Manchurian candidate-style assassin? That's what the L.A. Police Department thinks. London Guardian, new evidence challenges official picture of Kennedy shooting. Same thing. Uh, so that's all come out on that front. Sirhan Sirhan, Mark David Chapman, uh, John Hinckley Jr. Uh, we're going to be talking about that coming up uh, with Jim Mars in about 40 minutes. Uh, here's a screenshot from his YouTube uh, channel. It, 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 it hasn't been taken down yet. Uh, his MySpace was, but we were able to copy that. And the whole thing is mind control. He says, if I'm the mind controller, then I control the belief and the religion. And uh, I've studied the creepy declassified evidence of MK Ultra, MK Naomi, the admitted government mind control operation, and the people who are under mind control always believe they are the mind controller. And they always believe they're working for the government on a secret mission. Well, it turns out he told people months ago he was on a secret mission for the government. We have sworn affidavits uh, from Terry Nichols and others uh, that McVeigh told the guards and others at every prison he was at that he'd been on a secret mission for the government. And then we were able to get FBI documents via four-year lawsuits uh, and it turned out he was working for the government. Kind of like Fox News reported three months ago, Anwar al alaki number three in Al-Qaeda on 9-11, number one in uh, operations under bin Laden today, secretly meeting at the Pentagon two months after 9-11 with the Army, uh, top brass, including the Secretary of the Army. Oh, he ran the Fort Hood shooter, who was also a psychiatrist and wrote about mind control. He ran the underwear bomber that witnesses saw last Christmas, uh, the Christmas before last, uh, a little over a year ago, looking drugged and disheveled, being put on the plane without a passport. Later, that was confirmed, Detroit uh, Free Press, Associated Press, two months after our witnesses on this show, listeners of this broadcast, Kurt Haskell and his wife, both lawyers, witnessed the whole thing. And the FBI said it wasn't true, and two months later, the uh, Undersecretary of State, Mr. Kennedy, came out and said, yes, we were ordered to get him on the plane by an unnamed intelligence agency. So joining us at least 30 minutes, maybe even longer in the next hour, but he's on the deadline for a book he's writing. Uh, is Jim Mars, a real expert on this area. And I'm an expert, too, but he's a super expert on these Manchurian candidates. Uh, Jim Mars is an American former newspaper journalist, New York Times best-selling author, was a crime reporter for the Four Star Telegram, and articles on a wide range of cover-ups. Uh, he wrote the book for Oliver uh, Stone's film. Uh, it just goes on and on. He taught the first um, uh, you know, uh, college course on the JFK assassination at the University of Texas at Arlington. Uh, he's a member of Scholars for 9-11 Truth. JimMars.com is his website. Uh, Jim, this is a quick segment. We're going to come back. But let's go through some of the history of MK Ultra over and over again. I've got to say, over 80% of the time, we end up proving that these guys were in government programs. Uh, they had a, a shooter years ago up in Fort Worth, what, 12 years ago, turned out was in a secret Navy mind control program. Remember the guy that went in the Baptist yeah, that church? Was, yeah, that was the church shooting, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, it just never ends. We're not the ones reporting this. We're just covering it. You've got the floor on the history of mind control. Well, <clears throat> this, uh, this really goes back, again, to the Nazis. Uh, as you well know, since you've uh, read and promoted my book, The Rise of the Fourth Reich, uh, in fact, the judges at the Nuremberg war crime trials uh, sentenced seven German scientists to death for their part in human um, mind control experiments. Well, the CIA picked it up, and by 1954, the artichoke program was uh, 
was underway as part of the CIA's technical services staff. And uh, they were not alone. The Navy was also working at this. And that's why in 1959 we saw the book, The Manchurian Candidate, which was made into that movie with uh, Frank Sinatra. Uh, so it's certainly not uh, any way far out of line to be talking about brain-controlled uh, well, they had the 77 hearings where they admitted they spent billions of dollars in creating mind control assassins who have no memory. Exactly. And uh, the thing is, too, if you'll go back to some of the notorious shooting instances, uh, Cho at Virginia Tech, which, by the way, was right there by Blackburn, Tennessee, which is some of these mind control and drug experiments were going on, uh, and the shooting down at Fort Hood. Uh, which was an army psychologist, uh, psychiatrist, who ended up shooting uh, a lot of people that belonged to the psychiatric department. Now, you know, what's going on here? Well, of course, the media, all they can talk about is guns. You know, guns, well, you know, come on, I grew up in Texas. We all had guns. We took guns to school sometimes. Nobody shot anybody. The difference is drugs. It's the drugs. Uh, Cho... Uh, the two boys at Columbine, uh, all these guys, they were all on psychi psychiatric, psychotropic drugs. And uh, when you get people on those types of drugs, you got all kinds of problems. And by the way, just to interrupt and back you up, in the 1980 trials uh, of Prozac, they found a massive increase in psychotic breaks, people going into almost a dream state, and that their normal impulse control was no longer there. So if you got somebody who already leaning towards psychopathic behavior, then you get a woman drowning her four kids or chopping their arms off, or people right. going, and, and in, in, in almost every case, I can't even think of any, Kip Kinkle, Harris Kleibold, uh, yeah. the list, they're always on Prozac-type serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which also were developed for the government decades before as psychotropic mind control drugs. Please continue. Exactly. In fact, uh, at first of 2009, I believe, uh, the largest cause of death in the U.S. military was suicide. Uh, they even shut down Fort Campbell, Kentucky for a time because they had, were having such an outbreak of suicides, and all those people were given psychiatric drugs. It's the drugs, but you're not going to hear about that in the corporate control mass media because the pharmaceutical corporations are one of, if not their largest, advertisers. So they're not going to talk about that. At Jared Lee Loeffner, uh, who killed uh, all of these people and, and wounded so many others, and the media now saying restrict free speech in America because of this. I'm David Knight with the InfoWars Nightly News. Now, yesterday, two related stories broke on Drudge Report and elsewhere nationally. The first one was from InfoWars.com, and it talked about an update to the Batman shooter killings. Now, in that update, an inmate told by James Holmes that he was programmed to kill by an evil therapist. He felt like he was in a video game, and he said music from the soundtrack was a trigger for him to kill. They were looking for fundamental information on compounds that were would be capable of causing changes in in behavior changes in mental attitude in his uh, psychic driving uh, so-called uh, type of, of therapy he would give the patient intensive uh, electric treatment in order to make the patient to regress deeply, uh, become forgetful, and then he would uh, attempt to implant new ideas uh, in the mind of the patient. As this 1952 CIA memo says, the aim is controlling an individual to the point where he will do our bidding against his will, and even against such fundamental laws of nature as self-preservation.